Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this session. The objective of this session is to discuss the determination of interest rate using an alternative framework that is called liquidity preference framework that also called as market for money. So in the previous session uh, we have discussed the determination of rate of interest using a bond market and this session we will see that how using the market for money we can determine the rate of interest. So in this framework we will be talking about the supply and demand in the market for money. In alternatively it is also been called as liquidity preference framework. So why is called liquidity preference because liquidity means the ease to convert an asset into a spendable form without loss of time and value. So in this case or among alternative assets money is the most liquid asset that means you can easily use it for spending right without loss of time and value. So that is what we call it uh, the market for the money itself is the most liquid asset so this we also called as liquidity preference framework and this framework was introduced by uh, John Maynard Keynes uh, most celebrated macroeconomist. So he used this framework and he measured that the total wealth in the economy consists of two assets. He used only mainly two assets one is bond market bonds and the other one is money. So the total wealth in the economy assuming that there are only two assets uh, bond and money. He said uh, showed that actually the total wealth in the economy that the total supply of asset that is equal to bond supply and money supply uh, is equal to bond demand and money demand. So rearranging we can see that bond supply minus bond demand is equal to money supply minus money demand. So that means uh, if the market for money is in equilibrium suppose the money market in is in equilibrium then the bond market is also in equilibrium. Alternatively we can say that when the bond market is in equilibrium uh, money market is also going to be in equilibrium assuming that uh, there are only two assets. However, this discussion we can expand later on by including other assets like stocks, durable assets, real estate etc. But for the sake of simplicity we are using only two assets so that we can manage our discussion easily. Uh, we are using only two assets that means uh, bonds and money. So we are focusing this one. So as I mentioned here that if you are talking about bond market, bond market is in equilibrium then money market is also in equilibrium. So when that means just to understand the equilibrium rate of interest determination we can use the money market alone for our discussion. So look at the supply of money just like in the market in the market for money there is supply of money and demand for money. So mentioning on the y axis referring interest rate and supply of money the quantity of money per period on the y axis x axis on the x axis you can say that the money supply curve is a vertical line because the supply of money this is arbitrarily decided by the central bank the quantity of money to be uh, injected into the economy because of that uh, this is interest inelastic 
it doesn't matter the rate of interest is very high or low overall the government will be the central bank of a country will be supplying money in the economy so overall we assume that but there can be other factors it's not always necessary that money supply curve will be vertical because uh, sometime all the other business conditions even rate of interest so many other factors indirectly it will be uh, affecting the money supply curve or in some instances we actually draw uh, money supply curve as a positively sloping but here our discussion uh, assuming that money supply is exogenously determined by the central bank we assume that this is not responding to rate of interest we assume that is a vertical line right so this is interest inelastic and what about the demand for money the demand for money this is the money in an economy money in an economy is demanded by mainly by households and firms so we are drawing the demand curve downward sloping the rate of interest on the y axis quantity of money on the x axis quantity of money demanded on the x axis so the demand curve for money shows the quantity of money demanded at each interest rate suppose the rate of interest is at the r1 when the rate of interest is r1 quantity demanded is going to be q1 right this is going to be the quantity demanded and what if the rate of interest decrease it becomes r2 when the rate of interest become r2 the quantity demanded is going to increase that become q2 right this is going to be the new point of intersection of uh, rate of interest and quantity of money demanded so from this point so you can see that when the rate of interest keep on declining you can see that the quantity of money going to increase so simply the demand curve for money in overall uh, is downward slope expresses the negative relationship between interest rate and quantity of money demanded so then the question is why why do people how why do for households demand more money when the rate of interest decrease so let us dis discuss this point so prior to that let us see that what are the various forms of demand for money why do people demand money so people demand money mainly for three motives one is transaction motive uh, that is called we call it transaction demand for money and the other one is called precautionary motive and uh, that is called precautionary demand for money then the third one is uh, speculative demand for money so today we will discuss the transaction and precautionary demand for money then about the speculative demand for money we will discuss that one in the next session because that need uh, lots of more discussion and because of that we will make it in another session so about the transaction demand for money the transaction demand for money is due to the transaction motive so transaction motive means what the need of cash for the current transaction of personal and business exchanges so that means you demand money to pay for goods and services you keep money with you or you demand money for making payment to goods and services so in order to finance your day to day transaction so the amount the quantity of money demanded for transaction purpose it depends not only on income because it will on income quantity of money demand for it will be positively related to income higher your when your income increases you will be keeping more quantity of money with you for transaction purpose because you have more income and you you will be buying more goods and services that means the transaction demand for money will be positively related to your income but this not only depends on your income alone positive relationship also on interest rate on bonds so the moment we refer interest rate actually the yield to maturity we refer the interest rate on bonds so but the transaction demand for money will be negatively related to the interest rate so before that that uh, money serves as a medium for payments in the purchase of commodities whereas bonds do not so we mentioned here in the beginning of this session that means people the total assets in the economy can be classified into two one is money and the other one is bond so about the money money is the most liquid asset and it is as a medium of payment 
So about money, the functions of money, which I didn't mention much here, but the overall, the money function, the main function of money is to serve as a medium of exchange and to serve as a unit of payment and unit of account and as a store value of the assets. So here we are talking about money as a medium of exchange, money serves as the medium for payment in the purchase of commodities, whereas bonds are not a medium of exchange. So importantly, you know that when you are putting your money, you are um, making a portfolio allocation of your money, all of your income assets into money and bond. What is going to happen? You know that when you are holding your money, holding your assets in the form of money, it does not pay you any interest, right? But holding bonds, you are going to get a return that you are going to get interest income. So that means when you are keeping, when of your total assets, when you are making a portfolio allocation between money and bonds, two things come into account. One actually by holding money, uh, you want to meet your transaction demand for money maybe of your total assets, how much you maybe 10 percent you want to keep in the form of money remaining you are going to put it in bond market. So, but however the transaction demand for money when you are keeping more and more money for transaction purpose instead of investing in a bond market. Maybe for the sake of simplicity you can also say that you are investing your money in or putting your money in the bank that means depositing your money where you are going to get interest income and banks will be depositing this money in the bond market. Anyway, what you can see that uh, if you are finding it difficult that you are investing your money in the bond market, you can synonymously or you can just say, um, uh, assume that you are putting your money in the uh, bank. So, assuming that of your total asset, how much you keep for uh, transaction purpose that to meet your day to day transaction for to make payment for goods and services. It also depends on the market rate of interest. Suppose the market rate of interest is very high. Suppose the bond market, the rate of interest in the economy is going to be 10 percentage, then you will think that, so you, why should I keep more money with me for a transaction purpose? Because money holding do not pay any interest. So that means when you demand more and more money for transaction purpose, it also means that you are uh, foregoing the interest rate income, the interest income. So that means the interest rate is the opportunity cost. That means when the market rate of interest is increasing, that means that your transaction demand for money is going to decrease when your interest rate, the interest rate in the market is uh, increasing. So putting stating it in a simple terms, that means when the interest rate in the economy increase, that means the opportunity cost increase uh, then, then as a result you think that is better to demand less money for transaction purpose. So there is an inverse relationship between transaction demand for money and rate of interest. Then talking other uh, part of uh, demand for money is the precautionary demand for money and precautionary money demand that is the money demanded to meet unforeseen con contingencies of life. For example, to meet uncertain health expenditure. Suppose some unfortunate event happen like suppose hospitalization happen. So there is an uncertain right you do not know what is going to happen in the future. So in order to meet this unforeseen contingencies of life we keep some money. For, uh, similarly what if you are going to become unemployed or what if there is a you see that there is going to be a lag in getting your income right. So in to meet all these unforeseen contingencies people keep some amount in the form of money that we are going to call it as uh, precautionary demand for money. So precautionary money demand for money uh, always it is also sometimes clubbed with the transaction demand for money. Transaction demand for money is mainly the to meet the certain aspects is with the certainty to finance your day to day transaction. And so the precautionary demand for money is to meet the money that you are holding in addition to the certain transaction the, that the additional money to meet unforeseen contingencies of life. And as I mentioned uh, about the speculative demand for money, this we will discuss in one of our next session in detail. Because this one in the speculative demand for money, this we need to de relate more with the bond demand as well, the rate of interest as well. So we, we need some more discussion about the bond market before we discuss speculative demand for money. So this is how uh, the money market, uh, market for money equilibrium look like. So as I mentioned, the supply curve is uh, vertical line 
the demand curve is downward sloping and as you say that when the rate of interest decline uh, people will be demanding more money because the opportunity cost of holding money when the rate of interest is low the rate of interest keep on declining you can see that the opportunity cost of holding money uh, is less that means they will be keeping more money with them so in stating other words otherwise that means when the rate of interest is increasing when the rate of interest is high uh, people will be demanding less money right because of the opportunity cost so look at this point so the equilibrium point is here equilibrium point is at c uh, you can see that the supply curve is equal to the demand curve at this point so at this point the quantity of money demanded and supplied is going to be 300 and when the rate of interest is uh, 15 percentage then the question here let us discuss this point what if the interest rate is very high assume that interest rate is for example 25 percentage in this scenario you can see that there is excess supply of money right this distance this horizontal distance that means from this point to this distance you can see that the excess supply of money in this market is 200 right that is 300 minus 100 that is the excess supply of money so you can see that suppose the rate of interest in the market is 25 percentage so you can see that there is excess supply of money so with the excess supply of money you can see that at a high rate of interest so we just mentioned that high rate of interest means high opportunity cost of holding money right high opportunity cost of holding money people are content with more money that means they have they think that uh, is better too because uh, money supply is 300 here 300 billion but the rate of interest is very high that means 25 percent that the opportunity cost is very high people are content with more money and they will be demanding less money for transaction purpose you know why because when they are keeping more money with them and actually they are foregoing interest income because the high uh, interest income the rate of interest in the market is incentivizing them to make a portfolio reallocation in form of uh, demanding less money when they are demanding less money means because there are only two assets when they are demanding less money that means they are demanding more money uh, sorry more bond when they are demanding less money means they are demanding more bonds so in this case people they demand less money for transaction purpose uh, then you can see that there is excess supply of money so when people start demanding bonds so as i just mentioned here that when they are demanding less money when the demand for money transaction demand for money decline because of high rate of interest the high opportunity cost people will be start they start demanding more bonds so other things remaining cost what you have seen when people are demanding more bonds or when the households are demanding more bonds when the demand for bonds increases you can see that the bond price increase right because the demand for bond increase uh, that means bond price increase and we have also seen that when the bond price increase we can state uh, otherwise uh, in other words stating otherwise you can see that increase in bond price means decrease in interest rate right that means because of the inverse relationship between bond price and interest rate so as a result uh, what you can see here that because of this you can see that when the people start demanding more bonds bond price increasing then the rate of interest declining so you can see that gradually the opportunity cost of money demand declines so that means the money demand gradually decrease uh, hence money demand decrease so when the money demand keep on decreasing when the money demand is decreasing no more than when the because the rate of interest decreasing that means quantity demand quantity demanded increases the money demand decreases increases so simply stating says to simplify this we can say that when demand for bond increases rate of interest decrease when the rate of interest decrease the demand for money increases right demand for money increases so you can see that money demand for money de increases so when the demand for money increases finally this excess supply of money is wiped out by increase in demand for money so finally the, this is going to be the new equilibrium points 
So, this is when, when the rate of interest is higher than the equilibrium rate of interest. So, the starting point is there is excess supply of money, then uh, you can see that bond demand will increase, then rate of interest will decrease, then gradually there is uh, going to be increase in money demand, then finally equilibrium position will be restored at a point C. So, in contrast, uh, what is going to happen if the rate of interest is below the equilibrium rate of interest? Suppose the rate of interest is for example 5, when the rate of interest is 5, what you can see here that there is excess demand because rate of interest is very high, the opportunity cost of holding money for transaction purpose is very low, right. The rate of interest is only 5 below the equilibrium rate of, rate of interest. So, you can see here that uh, there is excess demand for money. So, when the rate of interest is very low, then at to 5 percentage, you can see that this much is the excess demand for money. Excess demand for money here is uh, this much, that means 200 billion. So, with excess demand for money, what is going to happen? So, when the interest rate is very low, when the at a low interest rate, low interest rate means again the low opportunity cost of money. So, what people would think, household think that uh, they will reduce, they will make a portfolio reallocation, they will be demanding less bond. The demand for bond will decline when the rate of interest is very low. When less demand for bond, you can say that the bond price decrease, obviously right. So, when the demand for bond is low, bond price decrease. In other words, bond price decrease means rate of interest increases. So, when the rate of interest increases, you can say that that means rate of interest started increasing, that means the opportunity cost of holding money also increases. That means the money demand decreases as a result. The moment gradually when the rate of interest increases like this, you can see that money uh, demand so, the rate of interest decrease, you can say that the demand for money decreases, gradually demand for money decreases and finally, the, the rate of interest keep on increasing like this, uh, finally, the new rate of interest, the new equilibrium point is going to be again at a C. The new equilibrium point will be restored at a point C and uh, finally, you can see that at this point money demand is going to be equal to money supply. So, what we have discussed here that the money market will be always in equilibrium like this uh, in general. Uh, in the long run money market will be in equilibrium where money supply is equal to money demand. So, money supply as I mentioned here that it is exogenously determined by central bank, uh, they decide arbitrarily decide. So, then the households, the econo households and firms uh, the especially the money demand it will be get automatically adjusted with the supply uh, with the given supply conditions. Now, let us see that this is what we are going to see that actually given condition we discuss how demand for demand by the rate of interest is determined in the market for money. Uh, now, let us assume that uh, what would happen if there is shift in the supply of money and suppose uh, the central bank decide that they are going to print more money, they are going to print more currency in the economy, uh, inject more money in the economy, how is going to change the rate of interest. We assume that all other things remaining constant, there is no change in the uh, overall business condition, overall economic environment in the economy, just RB, the Reserve Bank of India, the central bank decide that they want to print more money in the economy, they want to inject more money in the economy they print more currency in the economy and inject the and circulate in the economy, then what happens? Assume that anyway our assumption that uh, supply of money is controlled by the central bank and you know that an increase in money supply engineered by the central bank will shift the supply curve for money to the right. So, it would look like this, right. So, this is the initial equilibrium position and suddenly the central bank decide that they are going to print more currency and then the initial supply curve was MS0 note, then the new supply curve is going to be MS1 and this is going to be the new supply curve of money. So, you can see that there is initial excess supply of money. Then you can see that how you from the diagram it is obvious that actually the rate of interest is going to be R1 from R0 because the demand curve did not shift from left to right or right to left, 
only the supply curve has uh, shifted uh, to the rightwards. Obviously, you can see that this is going to be the initial equilibrium position is this one. This is uh, the, the, this one is initial equilibrium position. Then the new equilibrium position is going to be this one. So, what is the economics behind it? Why rate of interest decrease? From the diagram, we can obviously make that rate of interest has decreased. And what is the economic induction or economic interpretation of this? So here you can see that uh, the initial equilibrium at the R, people are content to hold the new money. They attempt because suddenly this is the initial equilibrium. Then suddenly there is increase in money supply. There is more money in the economy. So they, the people at R not people are content to hold the new money. They attempt to decrease their money hold money holding by buying bonds because now their money the, the, their money has increased money with them has increased so as a result what is going to happen they have more money with them so because their total asset we already mentioned that it is in the form of money and bonds when they are getting more money and then overall condition there is no change there then as a result what they will see that they attempt to decrease their money holding by buying bonds that means demand for bonds increases so when there is more money in the economy people they will be demanding more bonds that means they will be trying to decrease their money holdings so as a result you can say that increase in demand for bonds increase the price of bonds right so when the price of bonds increase that means we already seen that price of bond increase because he, now they have more money they have to invest they will be investing in bond market so that means the price of bonds will be increasing so that means nothing but the rate of interest will be declining so the rate of interest will be declining so that means the rate of interest will be declining so when the rate of interest decline what will they do when there is a fall in the rate of interest fall in the rate of interest is causes demand for money to rise so gradually when the when they demand initially initial equilibrium position is this one when we, because of more money uh, increase in money you know that they will be demanding more bonds when where they are demanding more bonds the rate of interest will be declining when the rate of interest is declining you can say that uh, they will be keep on each when the rate of interest keep on declining they will be keep on demanding more and more money because the opportunity cost of holding money this decreases so that means initially increase in demand for bonds then the rate of interest decrease then when the rate of interest start declining people start demanding more money because as a result because the opportunity cost of holding the money declines then as a result the new equilibrium position will be this one new equilibrium position is going to be this uh, so you can see that yeah this is the this is how the demand for money increases this is the new equilibrium position r1 uh, is going to be the new equilibrium position uh, that means the rate of interest in the economy adjusts when there is an increase in money through the bond market we are seeing the rate of interest declines and as a result the money demand also adjusts that means there will be a gradual increase in the money demand then finally you can say that money supply is going to be equal to uh, money demand right so this is the mechanism in which the rate of interest this is the reason when other things remaining constant when there is a sudden increase in money supply when the central bank inject more money in the economy the rate of interest decline uh, using this mechanism through the bond market and the further mentioned mechanism which i just mentioned here what if there is changes in equilibrium interest rate when there is shift in the demand curve for money so look at this there are two factors suppose the income income of uh, overall there is an increase in gdp uh, a gross domestic product in the economy there is increase in the level of economic activity and as a result the income of households increase so this is we can call it as income effect so when we assume at this point we assume that money supply remaining constant when the money supply is remaining constant we assume that like that and if what if there is increase in income of households this is we call it income effect at a higher 
level of income high level of income causes the demand for money at the each interest rate to increase and demand curve shift to the right that we already seen right because high income means uh, high transaction demand for money and people will be demanding more money and another thing is that price level effect a rise in the price level causes demand for money assume that there is no increase in income but the overall price level in the economy increases that means people need more money for transaction purpose as a result also people will be demanding more money so further expected inflation effect also same that means uh, persists only as long as the price level continues to rise a rising price level will raise the interest rate because people will expect inflation to be higher over the course of the year so when the price level stop rising expectation of inflation will return to zero so let us present this one in diagrammatically what if there is increase in income or increase in price level so we see that the initial equilibrium position is this one so we have already shown that actually if there is an increase in income or increase in price level the demand curve will be shifting rightwards so where is the new equilibrium position so the new demand curve intersect with the supply curve at a point 2 and then you can see that the demand curve the rate of interest is increasing here right so that means you can also interpret it in the, this way that when there is an increase in income or price level uh, demand for money increases and using through the bond market uh, you can see that the rate of interest increases here and in the next session uh, we will discuss uh, what are the factors that affect because in this session mostly our discussion was confined to determination of rate of interest next session we will see what are the factors that affect the changes or fluctuation in the rate of interest thank you